and welcome to the start of a very different vlog because this is going to be a travel-esque vlog less reading than the usual reading vlogs i'm actually in cornwall for a week and i've just arrived and we're staying at this lovely b and b called sophia's which is in penzance and i don't know if you guys can see but you won't be able to because the light's blinding but look i don't know if you can see that but that's the sea Basically, our apartment is right on the sea and I am loving it. It's also got like all this amazing natural light as well. Let me give you a little, a little tour. But it looks so, so nice. And also this is the front. I mean, waking up to this every morning is gonna be such a treat. I'm very, very excited. And I don't know if you can see, probably not, but basically over here, is a place called St Michael's Mount which is very famous in Cornwall so this is the bedroom we have not started unpacking yet as you can see this is the front door where you come in and then this is the lovely little living room which I think is like really quaint and sweet and then you've of course got your little sea view which I love and then going back through You've got the kitchen, which is nice and airy and light. This is our Cornwall apartment. I don't know what's happening to the hair. Basically, we took the train from London, which was five hours, and I feel a bit of a disheveled mess right now. Like, I feel a little bit grotty. So it's currently, what time is it? It's currently 10 past five, and honestly, we've basically just arrived, dropped our stuff, and then had a big walk around Penzance and into New Lynn, which is the town, the little village next to it. And had an ice cream, had some clotted cream Cornish ice cream, which is lovely. Um, but now we're just absolutely pooped. And honestly, I'm very much looking forward to just having a lie down on that bed and trying to choose a place to go for dinner tonight. So today has really just been a travel day and then tomorrow we are going to, where are we going tomorrow? Oh, to St. Michael's Mount, that kind of dot on the window I showed you out there. And after that, we don't actually have any plans set in stone. I think we're trying to just be a bit more flexible about it and just enjoy it because we're here until Friday, which is a good amount of time really. So I'm very looking forward to being on my holidays and the weather is glorious or it was, it's just gone really cloudy, but I'm very much looking forward to have a very beachy week by the seaside in Cornwall. I've never been here before, so if you guys also haven't been, hopefully this vlog will serve as a very cosy, very quaint um, little travel vlog for you. So we are just about to head out for dinner for our first evening out in Penzance. Um, forgot to book anywhere in the new COVID world where you have to book for everything. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to find somewhere that we can just drop in, I'm hoping. Um, but I'm already so exhausted. This is the thing, after five hours on that train, now I'm just like ready to crash out. But I did make myself a cup of coffee because you need to keep those caffeine levels up, you know? Hi everyone, we have just arrived at St. Michael's Mount, which is behind me over there. And the tide is currently, well, it looks like it's still in, so I don't know if we can like walk over.
So we have just arrived onto the mount, the mound, whatever it's called. And um, yeah, the sun's come out now, which is good, especially because we had to wait quite a while in that queue. But we're just about to walk to the castle gardens, which will be exciting. Um, and it's gorgeous, got little like some little boats here. Well, I'm cute. Now back from St. Michael's Mount. Guess which idiot didn't reapply their sun cream today? Oh my god, my face is like red raw. Guys, you've seen nothing yet. Wait until I show you my arms. Like, look at that. I'm an idiot. Basically, if you come into Cornwall, the sun is deceptive because it's so breezy and it's nice and windy during the coast. You're like, you know what? It's not that warm. I'm not gonna burn here. Oh boy, I am burnt everywhere. And the worst thing is I even wore two different types of Factor 50 on my face and obviously it just sweated off. So yeah, oh my poor nose, that looks so awful. Anyway, I wanted to quickly update you guys because we've had a lovely first full day in Cornwall and we went to St. Michael's Mount and Marazion, which is the kind of little town that St. Michael's Mount is next to. And tomorrow we're going to a place called, well, I thought it was called Mousehole. Apparently the locals call it Mousel. So I've been pronouncing it wrong that whole time. So tomorrow we're going to Mousel and to the, Mer the Mernac Theatre, the Minac Theatre, and then to Porthcurno Beach. So all of those are quite close to us in Penzance. And we just need to work out the logistics because we don't have a car, so we're relying on buses. And getting back from Marazion, Marazion, St. Michael's Mount, was a bit of a nightmare. We waited about 45 minutes just for a bus. And obviously, it's doable if you don't have a car, but you need to be really on it with the bus times and we just weren't that on it. So we need to definitely plan out the bus times for tomorrow and hopefully we won't get stuck anywhere. I very quickly wanted to update you guys because as you know, this is a channel all about books. And I think I mentioned that I was actually going to bring two books to Cornwall with me. So if you watch my July TBR, you will know all about those books. But the first one is Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. So Jamaica Inn, I actually read over half of this, as you can see, on the train ride down from London. And oh my God, this is perhaps one of my new favorite books. I did not expect to be so fully engrossed into this, but this is a fascinating book. And the reason I wanted to read this is because obviously it's Daphne du Maurier, but Jamaica Inn is actually a real place in Cornwall. It's on Bodmin Moor and we're not anywhere near that, unfortunately. I would love to go and see it though, because this book is super evocative. Basically, Jamaica Inn is about a young woman called Mary Yellen and Mary's mother dies and basically tells her that, you know, this farm that they live on, just the two of them, is not gonna be enough to kind of keep Mary, you know, to survive on. She needs to be somewhere with other people. So Mary's mother tells her to get in touch with her aunt Patience, who lives at this place called Jamaica Inn in Cornwall with her husband, who is the landlord of the Jamaica Inn. So Mary traipses across the country and, you know, ends up in this very desolate place. Jamaica Inn is the only inn for miles and it's in the middle of Bodmin Moor. And when she arrives, it's very, very clear something is not right with this inn. 
basically Joss, who is her uncle and the landlord of the Jamaica Inn, is an absolute brute, like a criminal, a tyrant. He beats her aunt, like he is an awful person. But a very fascinating character, I must say. If you read this book, you will kind of understand his character. Like he's definitely the villain, but like fascinating is all I'm gonna say. And as Mary begins to learn the kind of secrets behind Jamaica Inn, it's very unusual because nobody goes there. Nobody stays at this inn. And every so often, usually every fortnight, the bar will be full and they'll be serving alcohol and you know, there'll be all these people in, these vagrants, these thieves, you know, criminals basically frequent the inn, but they never stay there. And Mary tries to get to the heart of why this might be and try to really, solve the secrets and find out what Joss is doing at this inn and why he's got such a horrible hold over her aunt and let's just say the secret is pretty crazy like it's all pretty dramatic and pretty awful but along the way Mary meets Joss's brother Jem and she falls in love with Jem and basically even though Jem is cut very much from the same cloth as Joss in terms of like his kind of criminal ways i guess he's had a very very rough upbringing um you know mary falls in love with him against her better judgments and it all goes on from there so i am loving jamaica in so far i've got a very small chunk of the book to read actually so i might just settle down now that we're in for the night being out for dinner and everything i think i might just curl up on the couch with a cup of tea and this is my view right now Yes, that is the sea. So I may even curl up on this little window seat here. There's a guy down there waiting for fish and chips and just like enjoy the sea view, you know? everyone it is day three day two whatever anyway we have just arrived in Mausel which as you can see behind me is a gorgeous little it's like a little village um on the west of Cornwall and we got the bus down actually which was really nice amazing views but the lanes are so narrow here that it was a little bit terrifying but look how gorgeous it is here I'm just super super in love with it um so we're just gonna have a little walk through the village and just see what's here. like look at this it just looks like we are not in England like it is stunning I've just had a dip in the sea right there, which was lovely. The water was so cold though. But now we're trying to walk up to the Minock Theatre, which it looks like it's a bit of a trek, like up very, very steep cliffs. And I'm very, very nervous about it. <laughs> This 
is the Mayanac Theatre, which is built into the cliffside overlooking Porth Kerno Beach. How amazing does this look? So this was actually one of the locations I wanted to try and visit because they do like amazing like plays and theatre here, obviously it's a theatre. I couldn't get tickets for anything though, so if you are going to Cornwall, maybe look and see if you can book in advance. But it's definitely worth a trip just to see like for the tour. ignore my rather red and sunburnt face the sun is very deceptive anyway i wanted to give you a quick update because we're now home and after a really nice dinner of fish and chips has to be done i have just sat down to finish jamaica inn and honestly this book has surprised me so so much when i bought this i kind of just like didn't really know what to expect i didn't know a lot about this book but oh my god was this just an amazing discovery and i know probably you know there's probably a lot of you guys who've already read jamaica in but i've only read rebecca by daphne du maurier so i was really surprised and i think this is like one of my favorite classics or modern classics up there for sure but let me just tell you guys there is the biggest twist in this tale which i kind of saw coming towards the end of the book but not until very very late in and like only just before the twist was revealed did i think oh it might it might be going down this route but the twist really had me hooked and it really really surprised me so i'm just like a bit blown away like i found this book really addictive and i just couldn't wait to keep going back to it so that's a really good sign of a book i think and the writing is amazing. I think it's really well written. The tension throughout the whole book is just, you know, it keeps building and building until the final twist. And it's just very dark, but very, very well done. And I'm obsessed, like what an incredible read. So I urge you all to read this if you haven't yet. It's also the perfect thing to read if you're going to Cornwall. I'm right by the coast right now, like right by the sea. So it's not quite the kind of atmospheric moors of Bodmin going on, but it definitely paints this picture of Cornwall as this very like dark, stormy, unforgiving place. And it's just beautiful. Like, oh, I'm very, very happy I read this. And the next book that I'm going to be starting is A Sky Painted Gold by Laura Wood. So this book is described as a Great Gatsby-esque YA novel set in Cornwall. So I'm going to be starting this soon and I cannot wait to read this. So I will fill you guys in when I start this, hopefully tonight or tomorrow.
So we're just wandering through the streets of St. Ives and it's all just so quaint here, like, and lovely. And all the streets kind of look like this. So it's just dreamy and the sun is shining. It's a gorgeous day. 